After leaving Yamadera, we drove through the mountains straddling the Yamagata and Miyagi prefectural border to Mount Zao to visit the Okama crater that sits at an altitude of 1,841 meters. Yesterday we were in Yamagata, it was 25 degrees, it was like late spring, I had like my chest out, we were like styling. <laughs> oh look, there's still snow up here, that's crazy for me. You're not allowed to approach the crater and the roads are closed in the winter due to the snow. But with the drop in temperature and the volcanic rock all over the ground, visiting this crater feels like you're on another planet and it's really surreal. If you're nearby, it is worth the trip to check it out. Okay, so we have traveled for hours. We have left Yamagata Prefecture and we have entered Miyagi. We are now at Kamasaki Onsen and right behind me is this amazing massive ryokan called Yunushi Ichijo. And it's actually registered as a protected cultural heritage site. It's a massive ryokan and a massive <laughs> property. It's really fascinating to walk up towards it. Our car could barely make it through some of the lower parts of the um, overpass, overheads, over, over things, things. So let's take a little walk and explore. Located in a quiet mountainside, Yunushi Ichijo seems like a time capsule, a ritzy Showa era luxury ryokan that survived the test of time. And although the large property boasts a lot of authentic Japanese style construction, they've updated some of the rooms to be even more luxurious than they were before. Look at how big this room is. Oh my god, it's massive. The double beds behind me are big enough for at least four people total. Like you could have two per bed. Over here, we've got the living room. Very beautiful. Let's go start with the inside bath. The inside bath is really cozy. You've got a nice little oval shaped bath here. From the bath, you open a door. You come out into this gorgeous private open air bath. My absolute favorite part of staying in this ryokan, however, was definitely the kaiseki dinner. It's a perfect balance of fresh seafood and the renowned beef. And again, we were left with full stomachs. This further confirms my theory that in northern Japan, they really, really like to feed you. The next morning, we stopped by the nearby Shiroishi Castle, a castle that dates back to the 12th century, but has since been rebuilt. Here, you can try some genuine samurai armor and get a real feel for how the samurai used to live. Not only is this a great photo experience, but it shows you just how heavy layers of armor can be. I definitely learned I wouldn't make a good useful samurai. One thing you need to know about this outfit is that it is very heavy. It is 15 kilos, about 30, over 30 pounds of clothes. <laughs> so walking up and down the stairs, you gotta be ready for you gotta be ready to sweat a bit. Okay. For a coffee break, we headed to Watari City, a city in Miyagi that was heavily impacted by the tsunami in 2011. Here, a company called Watari uses upcycled kimono fabric to make brand new items. And at Nakamachi Cafe, you can join in a keychain making session using the upcycled kimono fabric yourself. All right, so we're going to make our own original keychain from reused upcycled kimono fabric, which personally, I'm very excited for because I think this is a great way to make a nice, unique Japanese souvenir where there's only one. I made this one! I think it turned out really cool. I love the vibrant blue color. I feel like it looks cool. It's super cute. I can't wait to um, put some keys on it and use it with everything else I own. Then it was time for lunch, and we made our way further to Natori City, a region that was heavily devastated by the earthquake and tsunami. At Kawamachi Terrace, the aim is to revitalize the region by providing outlets for local restaurants, produce, and wares to be purchased by visitors. So this is a great place for a pit stop, a rest, and a bit of souvenir shopping. So one of the foods that Sendai is known for is beef tongue. And if you haven't had beef tongue in Japan, you should, because it's delicious. Down south, we also have beef tongue restaurants and they are all from Sendai. <laughs> so since we are here in Miyagi, we're definitely gonna have beef tongue for lunch. And what better place to try it than Kawamachi Terasu in Natori. 
Finally, after a bit more driving, we arrived at our final stop for the day, Sendai City. With a population of over a million, this city is vibrant and energetic and nothing like I imagined it at all. This is my first time in Sendai and I've never, I, I don't know, I, like, I didn't know anything about it, I didn't know what to expect, but I love the greenery down here. It's so beautiful, lots of nature. Tonight, we're gonna just go walking around the city and maybe do a little bit of bar hopping and it sounds like a great way to um, just get acquainted with the area and the vibe of the culture here. So, let's go. We waited for it to get dark before embarking on our night tour with our tour guide Raisuke who showed us around. So we're on the hunt for Zunda, which is the uh, name of the edamame paste that is used in Japanese sweets here. Um, we don't see it so much down south, and I'm excited to give it a try at the, the spot because like, I don't know if the stuff that we can get in Kyushu is like as fresh or authentic. My first Zunda shake with mochi in it. it looks very interesting. I don't know what I expect. I thought it was gonna taste less green, but it has bits of um, mochi in it. Very chewy. If you like bubble tea or like tapioca in your drinks, this is something you should definitely try. Naisuke took us through Sendai's shopping arcades and into the side streets of Iro Hayokocho to deep dive into Sendai's bar culture. Our first stop, an authentic and exclusive yakitori restaurant, with chicken skewers grilled right before our eyes. All right, first round, we're having hearts. Mm. Mm. After a few bites here, we headed further down the alleyway into a rock and roll bar frequented by celebrities such as Cyndi Lauper and Chris Broad. And this is where things started to get really exciting. I've had yakitori before, but this restaurant was great in that it served a lot of soul food and specialty items that can really only be found in this particular area. Mm. The food culture all across Japan is really diverse and that's what makes it really exciting when you go out to eat. This time I tried Hoya or sea pineapple and trust me, that was an adventure. This was a great way to end the day and also my first and hopefully not last trip to Sendai. In the morning, we checked out of our hotel, which was conveniently connected straight to Sendai Station. We made our way down to the Shinkansen entrance and hopped on the train to our next destination. Where did we end up? Stay tuned for our final video in the series. <laughs>